and uh, that means we're live, by the way. Oh, when you say we're going live, that means we are live? Is that what you're well, saying? No. When I said that means we are live, that was my way of saying that it finally connected and we are now live. So, Oh. Heads up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Our, this is going to be an interesting show because my, uh, my sinuses are uh, all over the place. But I say let's do it. Let me know when you're uh, done doing what you do, sharing and, and telling everybody on the, that their Facebook, that that book of faces. That little doohickey that I got. That's right. Damn it, Trinity, I got a music box. <laughs> <laughs> it does video, too. You mean to tell me that's all in your hand? But you know what? I I, I, I promise well, I'm not going to do that anymore like that because it's, offen- it's offensive. Everything's offensive to somebody, man. No, but I mean, I mean, that group of people get attacked by everybody, and nobody defends them. So I'm, I'm defending them. Sure, I'm not going to imitate y'all no more. You can <laughs> the hell you want to, because I got a little accent too. So sure. So when you know, um, are you ready? People always trying to figure out my accent, and then I say I'm from Texas, and they go, "Oh, that's why." I'm like, <laughs> you didn't know that. You can't tell. Texas only steers. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Know, you don't know. So you can't say that either anymore, Trinity. Leave me alone. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's run this intro. Yeah. Shut up and sit down. Boom. <laughs> Man, that's, a, you, that's a loud gun. You know what I just realized? Like, I think the last two times, I believe, mm-hmm. I don't have to actually switch off of the intro. Once it's done playing, it automatically switches back to this. Oh. I think maybe I should have known that, but I don't know. From day one, I've always just clicked it off and gone to. So now you know. You heard it here, folks. First, I don't even, whatever. You heard it here, kids. You've you've earned producer of the year award. <laughs> exactly. And we're only in February, so what does that mean? Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I mean, nobody's got a chance. Just give it up now. Just yeah. you, you ain't got a chance. Um. So uh, what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Dope and Dharma. Yep. This is the Dharma Time edition here on not Tuesday. It's Thursday, I think. Oh, um, that's right. It's not Tuesday. <laughs> it's not Tuesday. Uh, and he is, of course, uh, the Dope Doctor, one and only, and I am the Dharma guy. Welcome. Um, we did not do a show on Tuesday uh, because no. he's, you know, he's rich and famous, so he's got to go do his thing. He didn't I could have done it. it. I could have done it. Uh, I could have okay. done it. I was in my hotel room during this time. I could have done it. I was just busy, <laughs> sure. but I could have done it. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, I was in Savannah, Georgia. Like, which, I heard that's a nice place, dude. Oh wait, you haven't been to Savannah, Georgia? I have not. No, you guys would actually really like jo- Savannah, Georgia. It's a very cool little town. I like. And Savannah, why would Georgia. we like it? What's What's great about it? Well, I mean, it's just well, <laughs> you don't like walking. But it's, no, I it, do not. It's, it's 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 a good little riverfront to walk up and down, check out the different right. shops and the restaurants and all that stuff. Um, Dana likes it because you can walk around anywhere in town with a drink in your hand, anywhere, like for miles. <laughs> well, then there you go. I'm sold. So, so that's why Dana likes it. But uh, but I, I like the food there and I like the ambiance. It's like it's like a if you mix uh, Myrtle Beach with uh, New Orleans, you get Savannah, Georgia. Interesting. Okay. Kind of what it's like, right? On. right. I'll uh, I'll I'll add that to the list right. of places. And it's I close, might go. and it's and it's really close. I mean, you if, if, you know what, five yeah, hours up, yeah, and, and you're there, like yeah, yeah, five or six right hours, on. you're up. Uh, so uh, t- today, man, I think um, I think we should talk about something that that uh, I'm going to assume we've all dealt with, hmm. either receiving or giving. Okay. Um, even though uh, a lot of us would like to say that we don't. Um, and that's defensiveness, hmm. right? We we are at times critical of others, right? We might want to point out a situation where they could have done differently. Maybe they hurt hmm. our feelings. Maybe they messed something up. Uh, so we, you know, we're great friends and relatives and spouses. So we try to come from a place of love and understanding. And we're like, hey, when you did this, it hurt my feelings. And when you did this, it caused something else that was unintended. And I just want to let you know about it. Um, and then oftentimes their response is not, Oh man, 
thanks for bringing that to my attention. You know, I'm sorry that that's how it came off. Maybe I'll do better next time. Uh, that's not how it come, <laughs> that's not the response for a lot of people. Mm. For a lot no. of people, it's well, well, you did this, and, and, and it's because you did this that I turned around and did this. And you, it's immediate defensiveness, it's immediate defending your stance and lashing out and being aggressive to the other person, right? Um, and so, I, I think that we've all experienced that on both ends. I think we've all right. received it, I think we've all at one point or another have said something to somebody else that resulted in them being defensive towards us. Mm-hmm. And as much as we don't want to admit it, I'm pretty sure we've all received something that rubbed us the wrong way that maybe we interpreted wrong, uh, poorly um, or unskillfully, if you will. Uh, and we didn't respond well. We responded with, mm. you know, uh, defensiveness, right? I'm, I'm myself not included because I've never once in my life been defensive ever. No, I'm purely offense. I like, I like, yeah. that's why I offend in advance, Trinity. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, all jokes aside, I think we're all guilty of it, right? We're all guilty of hearing something that maybe wasn't said, right? Uh, what you say, and what other people hear are oftentimes vastly different. Right. Uh, meaning, like, hey, uh, uh, I don't know, like, I really wish you wouldn't have done that, which sounds like, hey, I really wish that your behavior or your action was different. But what the person might hear is you're stupid. I hate you. You mess up everything, right? Like that's not what was said, but that's what they heard. And so then they're going to respond to what it is that they heard or, or, or they hear I'm perfect. I never treat you poorly. Why are you treating me poorly? Yeah. They hear that as well, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is where the whole keeping score and tit for tat thing comes Mm -hmm. out. And it's like, Mm -hmm. You know, because we've, like I said, we've all been in those situations, especially if you've ever had a, sp- a spouse, you've most likely been in, in involved in a, in a discussion where maybe you bring up something uh, and somehow you bring that, that issue up result yeah. in them telling you every issue that you've ever done in your entire life. <clears throat> yes. when, when, you know, you were just trying to point out something, right? Which, hey, all those things might be valid as well, but uh, it's all about timing in that particular instance. Yes. Meaning, if I'm bringing up something to you that's a concern of me, um, I'm not trying to invalidate any concerns that you might also have, but the moment I bring my concern up to you is probably not the right timing to then bring up all the concerns that you have with me. Like, it's... Uh, uh, timing in that situation but anyways yeah uh, I, I have to upgrade dana's phone to a terabyte of memory just to keep all the notes of when i am wrong because <laughs> she's yeah. got a really big scorecard i yeah. myself have zero i because i can't remember them and i i forget <laughs> to even write them down yeah i um so anyways i, I just figured it'd be a, an interesting thing to talk about because okay. uh, uh i think it's i feel this is anecdotal but i feel like it's happening more right mm. like i feel that society as a whole we've kind of gravitated to this idea of of lack of accountability right like we've there's always a reason for everything context matters more than the outcome you know like we've 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 gotten to this weird situation where uh we all feel so vindicated in everything that we say and do right like if somebody says something and it doesn't align with what we think we're so quick to just dismiss that it doesn't matter that you feel that way because the way I feel is more important. And, and I think that, that we see it a lot play out. Pick pick one of the top 10, you know, issues that everybody's fighting about right now. You know, uh, uh, I think it was uh, – we said at the top of the show we were mentioning something about uh, like race, for instance. Um you know, uh, uh, this is stereotypical at the moment. Obviously, each individual is different, but the the premise that you hear a lot of uh, from different sides, right? You have uh, the black side saying, "Hey, uh, you know, we're being hurt. You know, we've been wrong for so many years, whatever." And so, by definition, that means everything you do is wrong, and and you're the you're the reason for it, and you're the fault for it. And then, from the white perspective, it's like. Hey, you know, uh, no, you guys did. It's just this, this weird going back and forth. And then like, you like to bring up the Hispanic community likes to come in and say, well, wait a minute, <laughs> we're a bigger minority than all of you. Like, yes. So my point is, it's like <clears throat> everything has context and, and it's like nothing matters other than your perspective. And this idea no. of hearing other people's perspectives, this idea of realizing that maybe you went overboard, maybe you, you crossed a line and, and we're a little overzealous. Like, 
all that stuff seems to be out the window lately. And it's weird. You know, I see with my kids, uh, there's no accountability from school sometimes as far as, you know, my, my kids, it's weird. Like there's a, there's either too much or, or not enough. Right. There's too much accountability on my kids in the sense of oftentimes like my son uh, didn't, I don't know, bring something home or whatever it might be. Uh, uh, and I tell the school, uh, I'm like, guys, I never received anything. And they're like, well, we put it in his backpack. I was like, I, I, I hear you, but he's like 11. And right. so you're entrusting an 11 year old who sometimes doesn't remember to wipe his butt after he goes to the bathroom <laughs> to bring on a really, really important paperwork to me. Like, do you not feel that that's just a bit off? Like, do you not maybe like, hey, there's this invention lately that's like an instantaneous notification that I have right in my pocket. It's called email. And if you were to send a mass email out all to your people, and so you would ensure then that at least you've done your part to communicate to us. You know, so that so in, in that sense, it's too much accountability. It's like you're expecting right. him to do things that he's not necessarily capable of at 11. Or there's not enough in the sense that, Things like due dates don't really matter <laughs> anymore. <laughs> when I was in school, if it was due on Friday, that's it. You either turn it in on Friday or you get a zero. So now it's like, hey, it was due Friday three weeks ago, but you can still turn it in today and we'll give you credit, right? So there's like too much accountability or not enough. Um, and, and the same goes for uh, life, right? When we're out there, we watch, you and I have been guilty of, conversing about uh some of these videos of brutality out there and and being uh not in the mainstream right like if i see an obvious crime happening uh, you know my my ch my my choice is accountability like hey like the, the one that i i could think of is the gentleman who was where he was not supposed to be he was tased he was hit he said he was going to go get a knife and then he was shot when he was grabbing the knife you know what i saw was accountability like hey you're you're breaking the law you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing you're grabbing for a knife and i'm gonna hold you accountable mm -hmm. but then the other side is like no accountability by saying hey you don't ever shoot somebody no matter what so and then the list goes on and on and on and on right so everything from interpersonal relationships to just like things happening in your home to things outside of the home on the national stage we're we've reached this weird pinnacle right now of like just bitter defensive just lash it out like have you seen that same thing or am i off base here no I, I i do actually see the same thing i mean what i see is that you know because mommy and dad are your fighting um <laughs> yeah you know which are our two political parties uh that dominate uh this country at least um the kids are left just either having to pick a side or unattended um and based on whichever side mommy and daddy like if mommy feels like she can use us to her advantage or if daddy feels like he can use us to to his advantage they excuse our behavior or make excuses for it um so it does leave us in a situation most of us most citizens that just really just want to raise our kids really just want to have a, a, a pleasant life a happy life um you know life is hard enough uh without having to worry about what side that it is 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 speaking to me a certain way and we're no longer looking at what the actions are right i think what you're saying is that we get defensive because we're trying to we're trying to somehow explain our action and sometimes we're just wrong and 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 i think we have to get to a point that it's okay to be wrong sometimes you know it, it's a <laughs> learning situation for for me to be wrong um and I, you know where I've learned this the most, Trinity, and I did not expect to learn this the most from my kids. But when my kids call me on something and they do it in a really cool, unique way, and, and they use sometimes my language or my style or my my way of being, yeah. um, I just get a little smirk and I just go, you're right. And, and But it feels so good because I could get defensive, and, and, and you know, which I would if it were anyone else. But because it's them and because I'm constantly thinking of whatever is necessary for them to get a life lesson out of it, it I, I, I accept it so well. So we know that we hear some of the same criticisms by, by somebody, but we allow them to do it. Right. But then if somebody does it that we either detest or we've already taken away their, their privilege to, to comment on us, then no matter what they say or how they say it, it's it's disgusting, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yep. It's those are fighting words, 
because the proof is in all this mommy and daddy fighting, right? Um, let's think about our real moms and dads and the things that they have said, or our real brothers and sisters and the things that they have said. Yet, we still minded them. We still love them. We still, you know, eventually listened to them or at least listened enough to not get caught again, which means we didn't really listen. We just learned how to do it better. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of like overtly just not. And then so our real moms and dads sometimes are accidentally getting to a point where they allow these behaviors as well. But you wouldn't allow them in your own house. You wouldn't allow some of our behaviors that we do in the outside world or to other people or to coworkers or to friends or to neighbors. You wouldn't allow that done in your own home. Yet for some reason, we don't, we, we, we're finding it acceptable to do out there. So I think kids are really not being raised in a, in a, in a, in a consistent environment. And if we've learned anything by being parents, you're a parent, I'm a parent. Um, hopefully one of the, you know, very soon I'll be a grandparent. Not that Dottie is pregnant or anything <laughs> like that. And definitely is always not pregnant. Okay. But, but, you know, any year now, right? Um, what I'm saying is that, that, you know, we know that consistency is what helped with our children. Not the one-time life lesson, not the one-time sure. thing, but the things that seem to have really stuck in their heads and the things that they really go by are the consistent messages that we gave them. So if we would ask them, you know, uh, what would dad say in this, in, this, in this situation? What would mom say? Because of the consistency that they've monitored, they are really good at being able to say, you know, very closely to what you would say, <laughs> probably, you know, or, yeah. or what you think. That proves that consistency matters. So if we consistent, consistently give inconsistent messages, then how are they supposed to learn? You know what they're going to learn? What which one they're going to pick? They're going to which one makes them feel better? They're going to sure. go by which one allows them the most leniency, the least accountability, because. Even though as adults, we know accountability matters and accountability has helped shape us. When you're a child, when you're younger, you want zero accountability. There's no way you want it. And that's that whole psychological thing. That, remember, teachers used to say, oh, you're negative attention seeking. And I used to look at them and go like, <laughs> do you what does that mean? Because as a young person, I had no idea what that really meant. Right. They're act because they act like I wanted their attention. I'm like, uh, no, I did not want your attention. I actually wanted you to leave me the, the hell alone, you know. <laughs> And they tried to expa explain a psychological profile to a child. They tried to explain yeah. something that they themselves learned in some psych 101 class that they have no idea how to explain it. But they knew <laughs> how to identify it and regurgitate it out of their stupid mouths. And what I'm saying is we constantly do that. We're giving psycho babble to young kids and not understanding what we're saying. But what is the re end result? And we don't know. We have no longitudinal study on lack of accountability. We have yeah. no longitudinal study on lack of discipline. And so were we doing things rough, aggressive, maybe out of uh, out of what we think should be the case? Yes. But should we always swing the pendulum the complete opposite direction and think that that's the correct way to do things and that's a hard no and that's i think we all agree with that right just we tend to now i'm not going to say nowadays it's always been that way we always just tend to agree with what sounds like what we want that's normal <laughs> that's normal human yeah. behavior sure um well you you also i, I think you you nailed it on the head as well uh right at the top of the show when you said the the other thing that the people might hear um because uh, i'm just looking back so there's two things going on here right there's there's the defensiveness that we get mm -hmm. in the national level and on the outside world okay and then there's the defensiveness that you get in your in your home or maybe in your workplace mm -hmm. right and i think that for the home and in the workplace i think you nailed it on the head earlier in the sense that while yes there's potentially unhealed traumas and, and things of that nature that people are responding to, you know, their button is kind of big and you accidentally hit it. Um, I, I think you were correct in the sense that what we do here oftentimes is, Hey, I've never mistreated you or I've never done anything wrong, right. but you did. Right. Right. Cause that's where the whole, like this blame game starts to happen is, mm -hmm. is you feel like when somebody, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the word calls out because it feels aggressive, but like mm -hmm. <clears throat> when somebody takes exception to something you said or did, instead of hearing, hey, like this is my teammate 
or this is my my friend. This is somebody who I've welcomed him into my life for a reason. Like I have some sort of respect or love for this person. Right. Uh, let me hear him out. Like let me mm-hmm. let me try to figure out. Let right. me understand where they're coming from, whether I agree or not. Like let me right. let me see where they're coming from. Um, instead of doing that, like you said, I think what people oftentimes hear is, "I'm awesome, you're not," and this is why. Uh, <clears throat> and it's sad that we hear that, right? Because I don't think that's what's intended. Oftentimes, if <laughs> if not, I'm not I'm not going to say never because I'm sure right. there's somebody out there that does. Uh, I'm going to say the vast majority of the time, and that's where you always hear these these therapists talk about or even on these like relationship shows and you know even older people who've been married for a long time they always say the word communication that's what they mean right (laughs) that's what they mean is is effectively communicating to somebody how you're feeling but then also allowing them to effectively communicate to you hearing the message in other words turning off that little kid inside of you that's getting ready to just explode on this person who thinks that they're so much better than you they never do anything wrong and how dare they talk to you like turning that little thing off, right? And and I agree with you, man. I really do think that that's the crux of the interpersonal ones. Maybe not so much out in the world. Maybe not so much uh, nationally. Um, I think nationally has more to do with accountability. Right. Uh, whereas you know, in the home, in the workplace, amongst friends, I, I think that um, and, and the closer they are to you, the less leeway they get. Right. <clears throat> right. Like I probably give you more leeway than I give my wife. Only because, you know, my wife says something, it's like, whoa, hey. Well, because, I you know, same thing. I already have, I have a memory bank, you know, mm-hmm. of some things that maybe I looked over or some things right. I didn't address with her or right. little things that I'm like, ah, whatever. And then when she brings up once, uh, she brings up a uh, uh, something I might have done or said or whatever, you, you know, my inclination that I fight against, but my, my initial inclination is to hold up. I remember when you, you know, like just yesterday you did such and such. So let's, let's, and, and I think we're all guilty of that. Right. And I do my best to not do that, but I'm guilty like the rest of us. Um, <clears throat> but I do think that that's kind of where it stems from. Right. Is just this weird notion that no, no matter what they say, what they meant was I'm better than you. You suck. Right. This is why. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know what it feels like Trinity? It feels like, um, it's like you, you, we're walking around with a game, and the game is find the hypocrisy. <laughs> and so whoever you talk to in whatever situation you're in, your only job is to find the hypocrisy in their statement. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like, it's like you get in a conversation to find out how they're somehow being hypocritical, at least with, you know, at least that's the way it seems. There's yeah. a lot of people, that's all, that's, that's why they're in a conversation. Um, you know, you, you know what we need to do is start promoting some of the books that I think really help people. Not that I ever read it, but I do know that it used to be promoted a lot is how to win friends and influence people. There was a reason that book is, is where it is in, in our American system, right? Because, right. um, when I say American, so it's only cause I never went to school in England. Right. And, and when I did go to school in Germany, it was an American school. So, so that doesn't count. Uh, but, uh, the how to win friends and influence people was intended for salespeople. Right. However, anytime I hear someone reference that book, like what they learned from it, it seems like a, like a regular lesson that everybody should know, right? And one of the key factors in that is you want people to walk away from a conversation feeling good about themselves. And the best way to have people walk away from a conversation feeling good about themselves, apparently it must be in the book because I keep hearing it talked about, um, is that, uh, see, I'm admitting I didn't read it, um, yeah, I is... Read it is that you allow them to talk about themselves rather than you just only talking about you. If you right. go into a conversation, all you do is, is blah, 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 about yours, and you leave and you know nothing about them, know nothing about what they've gone through, then they were effective in making you feel good about that interaction. Right. But do they feel good about the interaction? Because they may have gone away and just like, all they did was, <laughs> I heard you, blah, 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 and then whatever. And the reason you feel good is because they actually listened to you and didn't interrupt you. That was it. Right. So you think they agree with you, you think they like you, you think all that stuff. They they effectively convinced you right. that that you were liked. When realistically they were probably sitting there silent going, I wish this person would just shut the hell up. <laughs> Why I are they calling care. me? I don't care. I don't care. I said good I, I said, How are you doing? I really did not mean that. <laughs> you know, I said, Hope you're having a great day. It, that doesn't mean I wanted to hear about your day. Right. <laughs> That's probably what they're thinking. Probably. But because they're polite. But because they probably read the, the book, 
They're Maybe. just letting you go on and on. But I think things like that, I think that how do we get back to some of those lessons, Trinity? Like, like in, in, in when I say, how do we get back? Again, I always like to preface it that remember Elvis was, was a dirty, nasty man before he was a saint, right? Uh, uh, jazz was dirty, evil music before it was like, you know, the etiquette world, you know, like it was high class. Uh, so, sure. so depending on what generation you're in, you're always going to look at the youngsters and say, get off my lawn. That's part of the deal. So this is our turn to do that. Yeah, this is our turn to do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to give up on my turn just because I, I'm aware of it. I'm still going <laughs> to say, get the hell off my lawn. You know why? Because we should have got off the damn lawn. Right. You know what I mean? You know? So I'm saying it. Uh, but can we at least teach the younger people out there that sh we understand why they're saying what they're saying? We understand what they're doing but please understand that you are an evolution in progress not us we're we don't we're not going to evolve enough in our short amount of time left on earth uh to make a difference in your life but you however can evolve a tremendous amount in your lifespan to help the generations behind you and so take that as a responsibility not as a you're the first generation ever to think these things or you're the only generation to ever have thought of these things or you're the only generation to save this world this planet these people because everyone before you is a complete idiot that's that is if you think that way you are the problem right if you think that way you my friend are the problem that means you're coming into it concrete and not water concrete is immobile concrete doesn't learn concrete doesn't listen Water flows, water adapts, water figures it out. So be water. I couldn't agree more. Um, I had a, a, a quote here that I, I kept years ago, actually, that, that I thought was pretty good. And I'm going to read it now because it, it totally fits with what we're talking about. Okay. Um, it says, uh, uh, and don't ask me who, who, who said it. I don't remember. Uh, and in controversy, the instant we feel anger, we have already ceased striving for the truth and have begun striving for ourselves. Hmm. I, I, that one spoke to me long years ago when I first wrote it or, or when I first mm -hmm. copied mm -hmm. it down. Mm -hmm. um, because at face value, I was like, well, like I had to, when I, but when I really thought about it, I was like, yeah, you're kind of right, right? Like, if you hear something, if you start getting angry, you're no longer trying to get to the truth anymore. Right. You're you're defending your stance. Your you feel some sort of fear that you're either not going to get what you want or you're losing right. what you have. Right? Like respect, love, whatever it might be. And now you're responding out of that, and that's where the anger comes from, right? Because right. we all, have, like, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> anger is a symptom, right? Some people cry, some people get angry, you know, but it stems from hey, that hurt. Right? Like that didn't feel yeah. the way I wanted it to feel. So now I'm going to respond. You know, and like I said, some people cry, some people get angry, some people, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's this, a response to another feeling. Yeah. And so as you start getting angry, like you're no longer trying to get to the bottom of things. All you're trying to do is just stop that icky feeling, right? Like whatever the, oh, I don't like that. I don't, it doesn't feel good. So now I'm going to stop it. And so I, I think that, um, this whole concept of listen more than you speak is, 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 uh, uh extremely valuable. Right. right. And, and as I've gotten older, I've, I've appreciated that more, you know, maybe because I've gotten wiser as I've gotten older, I've gotten less concerned with the viewpoints of others as far as judge, judging me and how I'm presenting to the world kind of a thing. As I've gotten older, I've cared less. And that's enabled me then to see the benefits of when somebody's saying something for me, be like, okay, like, mm -hmm sure okay right. you know like because <clears throat> the like two things can be true is such a wonderful mindset when it comes right. to this like you said about hypocrisy you know so if i'm saying something and and you know somebody wants to point out something about myself that coincides with that you know there was a time in my life where i would have defended my stance and given all the context and reasons why they're wrong and and, and why they're the ones that, instead now i'm like yeah you're probably right but that doesn't change what I'm saying to you. Like two things can be true. I can right. absolutely be full of hypocrisy at the moment. Right. And I could have absolutely trampled all over your feelings yesterday or today, or mm -hmm. I could have, you know, inappropriately done this or whatever it might right. be. You're right. I'm not saying I did or didn't. I don't know. Right. But that doesn't change the fact that I'm telling you right now, this is how I feel. Amen. Like this is what happened. And so I think that, that 
on both ends of that spectrum, we have to kind of keep in mind that one doesn't negate the other. Right. So if you're getting defensive, you have to understand that, that nothing you're getting ready to say is going to take away your behavior. If anything, it's going to make it worse. Right. This person, you know, remember why they're there, right? <laughs> like, now, if you're standing in line at 7-Eleven and some random person, like, who cares, right? Like, I don't need to hear your opinion of my life. <clears throat> but if this is a friend, if this is a, a relative, if this is a, a spouse, if, if this is a child, if this is somebody that's important in your life, that you're you're choosing daily to keep that person in your life, right? Because you don't have to, like, unless they live with you, you can pretty much, you don't, they don't have to be in your life every right. day. So you're choosing daily. And even if you're married, you're choosing that person every day. And so try to remember why you chose that person, right? Like, this is not coming from, uh, and I, you know what? I think you and I do it really well, to be honest with you, <clears throat> um, with each other. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say with our spouses because I don't really know. I'm not in your right. house, but I think we do it really well with each other. And, <clears throat> and a lot of the men that I've gotten along with in my life mm-hmm. are capable of the same. And I used to say back in the day when I, uh, I met one of my buddies, we were we had this kind of conversation back then was uh, there was never a competition. Like, you know, oftentimes, especially with men, you get into this whole uh, alpha male type thing, right? Like somebody's got a big, the biggest one in the room, which therefore means everybody else must be below you. Right. Um, and, and I don't get along with those people, right? right. Uh, the people I do get along with are the other, other men in the room that are confident enough to say, you can be great, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean I'm small. Right. We can both be great. There's enough right. room in this room for all of us to be great and in the same room. You know, right. game recognizes game. Real recognizes real. Like, hey, man, you're in your lane, dude. That's, that's awesome. Like, I'm not hanging out with people who I don't think are great. <laughs> right. So if I'm friends with you, that means I think there's something great about you. And that doesn't infringe on my ability. If anything, I'm trying to learn from it, right? Like, let's right. share notes here. Um, and so I think, so those are the individuals I get along <laughs> with. So I know you and I, because we've had many a debates over the years, uh, right. some on air, some off air. Uh, uh, some with with uh, stupid things like you know who who the goat is for football or you know more in, you know, involved things um, and, and oftentimes we disagree right but at the end of the day I, we we come from a place of respect and there's been times mm-hmm. where we've hurt each other's feelings and it usually doesn't last long mm-hmm. we're dudes mm-hmm. thankfully so mm-hmm. I think within a couple minutes it's usually eh, whatever who cares um, but the point is I think we both uh, come from a place of respecting the other person's stance. Right. You and I agree or disagree. And so I, I think that that is the lesson here for everybody is when you're interacting with somebody, try to keep in mind who that person is to you. Like not the words that you're feeling at them or the, the feelings that you're feeling from the words. Cause that's not them. That's you. Right. That's how you've taken in what they've just said. Now, uh, you know, and if you feel like it's starting to kind of rub you the wrong way, you know, this is where uh, uh, mindfulness comes into play, right? With spirituality is the feeling tone you know we don't do that enough until too late right? right how many times have people caught themselves you know totally fine minding your business you get involved in a conversation with somebody and you have no idea how it ended up in an argument right you're like arguing and fighting you're like i don't even know how i got here <laughs> like 10 minutes ago i was just fine right well it's because you were not mindful of the feeling tone as it's happening right like there's a moment when somebody says or does something that your brain looks at that and says, I like that, I don't like that, or I don't care. And the problem is we don't <laughs> we don't pay any attention until after we've already made that decision and we're already responding to it. That's when we start to say, oh, I guess I didn't like that. Well, it's too late now because you've already completely lashed out. And so part of mindfulness in the spiritual sense is acknowledging. And this is the thing that I, I know I've gotten really good at over the years. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you've been good since I've known you for the most part. And that's also, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, uh, the re- the uh, rehab, 12 steps, that kind of stuff. Because from what I've seen you do a lot of that in, in recovery. Um, so uh, this concept of, hey, that's dumb. <laughs> you know, like uh, when I was younger, I wasn't great at it. But as I've gotten older with kids and whatnot, I can literally pinpoint it now. If somebody says something to me, I know immediately I didn't like that, and this is why. Mm-hmm. Re- regardless if it's justified or valid, regardless if that's what you intend, it doesn't matter. I'm aware of how I interpreted that. And so it's up to me at that point to decide if it's valid or not. Meaning if, if 
I don't know if you were to say something to me like we're designing something, and you were to like not like it for some reason. I'm completely making stuff up right now. So bear with me. <laughs> if, if you didn't like something and wanted me to change it, what I could hear is, "Hey, I don't respect your time. Hey, right. you're not good at this. Uh, you don't have value or whatever." I can hear that, and right. then my gut instinct is to respond with, "What are you talking about?" But that little voice inside me says, oh, I, I see what's happening here. No, I'm not going to choose that. He's not coming from that place. He's, so that's an example of what I mean we can do daily is, is, is first of all, pay attention to the message. Yeah. But most importantly, you got to be aware of that feeling tone. And I think so many of us aren't. We're yeah. not aware of that moment that we've decided intellectually, I like it, I don't like it, or I don't care. That, that is so right, uh, Trinity. Um, we, we're often out of the moment, unfortunately. You know, we, 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 we're holding on to a moment that maybe already stung us in the past, and we walk around in that. Like, I think I was joking with you the other day. It's like when I was on a plane or when I was traveling, I was saying I'm very different when I'm all by myself traveling right. for, the, for the most part. For the most part, I'm very unapproachable when I'm traveling. I kind of stay to myself, um, don't really talk a lot, um, especially if I'm tired. Uh, and I'm just kind of like, so, so I probably look like a jerk to a lot of people. You know what I mean? I, I have this resting bitch face. <laughs> I don't know how that thing. feels at all. <laughs> you know, well, as a bigger person, you have more of a responsibility to not have a resting bitch face because, you know, uh, we, you're I scary. Failed that responsibility. Yeah, you're <laughs> scary looking. You know what I mean? I'm not scary looking. I just, um, uh, not just like my, my son-in-law says, like an intimidating kind of look like it just look like I'm looking for, for a problem. Or whatever, maybe, um, and so so I, I I have to acknowledge that I have to know that I do that. So I have to soften. Like when it comes out of my mouth, I soften my voice a lot uh, when I'm dealing with with uh, you know servers, um, you know flight attendants, and I have to soften my tone because I know I'm not looking like a nice person. You know how like when there's certain actors that we've always seen get typecast in a certain way because they just look like a jerk, right? I have a feeling I I'm I look like that. I, I have a, you know what I mean? It, it, you know I I don't look like the lead character. I always look like the jerk. So so but you have to acknowledge that and be okay with it and just understand. Okay, you know it's not their fault. It's it's you know it's just it just is what it is. Right. Um, you, you just got to be aware, like like you said, be mindful of it. The other thing is that I think that god man i don't i don't want to sound like uh, like the bloods here but but i think that tiktok uh has painted some things like i i think that everybody looks at the things like like tiktok filters um in in like we tend to view a lot of people like through a, the tiktok filter rather than a regular filter in other words like if everybody that looks a certain way like you automatically put a devil you know filter on it so we're all walking around like devils then then that's all you're gonna see you're not gonna see the real me you're gonna right. see the filter that you placed upon me Right. You know, and, and for you, for instance, you know, I, if I look at you and I just see the clan, the clan hat, you know, <laughs> and that's not who you are, you know. But if I put the clan filter on every white person in America, then I'm going to treat you all like a Klansman. Right. You know what I mean, it's just what's going to come out of me. And I think that's where the life lessons have to stop. We have to stop putting filters our our shit. You know, because of based on our insecurities, our pain, our incorrect thinking by our parents who just they were unhealthy because a lot of you younger people, you have very unhealthy parents. I know they loved you. I know they intended it the right, but they have such bitterness and hate that they're applying it to you right now. And so you're learning a lesson that they couldn't resolve. They didn't know how to resolve it. So what they're teaching you is to continue hate or continue a problem, continue a pain. And in our, our job as future generations is always trying to deal with stuff that our parents were unable to deal with and their parents got it i mean they got it from their parents who they were unable to deal with and their parents got it from their parents who were unable to deal with it for whatever reason for whatever reason some some pains have, have gone on for generations for generations but our job is always that i have my own pain i don't need yours i have my own problems i don't need yours um i have my own path I appreciate you highlighting yours. So that is always an option. I can always walk down the path that my parents created for me, or I can choose a different path. So having it as an option or having it as a mandate is two different things. And so I encourage everyone to accept and appreciate the options available to you 
and understand that the one that you may choose may just be a little bit more difficult or it might be a bill of goods. It may be fake. It might be phony. It might not be real. There is always a highlighted path, and it's always easier to at least walk down the path that someone else forged before you and then maybe add something to it rather than try to completely reinvent it. And I think that's where we get to in arguments. I think that's where we get to in communication. I think that's where we get to in relationships. Um, you have your loved ones trying to give you feedback on a situation or people that are well-intended to give you feedback, and you tend to listen to the one that sounds more like what you really want to hear. You know, uh, you're, you're, for you females, your girlfriends, for you guys, your guy friends who are in the opposite situation. For instance, if you're a married man and you're listening to your single male friends about <laughs> feedback, that's a bad or idea. your divorced friends, good luck. Yeah, if, if, you're, if, if you're a female and you're listening to your female friend who is three times divorced or oh good luck with that you know yeah. what i mean married helps married single helps single that is also a truth people so yeah. so uh i for once i i get asked uh, you know because i'm a counselor in life uh a lot of people will try to ask for 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 advice and i'll say i'm not in your situation you know so so i can give you what what sounds like textbook kind of response um and i can also give you my friend feeling but I'm not going to use both with you because you're in your situation and in it's a baited question. I'm too much your friend <laughs> sure, here sure. in this situation. So I'm just going to give you some textbook stuff and I'll give you my friend thing, but you have to take, you have to live with your end result. Not me And text, text responses don't always apply and, and friend <laughs> responses don't always apply. Yeah. And I, and I think you can, you can attest to that, right? When we've had deeper conversations about our, our personal lives, uh, I can give some responses, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure I always come out at the end and says, yeah, but you got to live with it. Yeah. So that's the, that's the end result. You have to live with it. So that's, that's the most important response. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the most important lesson in, in all friend conversations sure. for you to know as a friend that your friend has to live with it. Not you. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, <clears throat> so everything you just said, I think um, really, very nicely applies to to giving defensiveness right like when you're hearing something in mm -hmm. then turn it around and lashing out um so i'm going to try to address what worked for me anyways on the other side of that okay. when you're trying to give out not necessarily criticism but just whatever it is that you're giving out and you're receiving mm -hmm. defensiveness in return okay. right okay. so for me i uh what worked best for me was like a a uh, a subtle like a I don't know like a, like a slide a, a pivot a little bit from what worked for you because I, I tried really hard to do what worked for you and it just didn't it it never worked I tried so hard because um, for me what I'm getting at is whenever I would say something to somebody and, and I'm coming from a seemingly innocuous position right I'm not I have no malice whatsoever. I'm mm -hmm. legitimately just coming from an analytical perspective. I see a right. flaw. I'm trying to say something. Right. Um, uh, and if I get uh, nastiness in return, uh, my my go to is is I'm going to shut that down. <laughs> my go to is no, you didn't just come at me with some attitude after I was trying to be cool. Like are, are we're giving out attitude. Oh, cool. Let me know. I'll I'll, I'll give some back then. You know, I used to always say I'm a mirror, right? I'm going to give you back what you're giving me. Right. And so, and the problem was, is I would escalate. So if somebody gave me a little bit of attitude, I'm giving you a, a bunch right, right. back. Right. Um, and so uh, what I, what was hard for me to learn how to do was to not uh, uh, negatively respond to the defensiveness that I'm receiving and turn around and make it worse. And I know you said back in the day what worked for you was uh, talking to somebody. And it wasn't with random everyday people. It was like within your own home, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, uh, but you also said it too. You did it in, in counseling sessions as well. And that was think in your head, I'm coming from love, right? Like I love mm -hmm. this person. Um, problem is uh, that when I would think of that, I would be like, no, I don't. Like, not right now. <laughs> like I want to kill this person. I hate this person. Um, which obviously I didn't, but in that moment, you know, I'm, I'm consumed with anger or rage or frustration or whatever yeah. it might be. Um, so it just didn't work, you know, like it just, it, it, I would try to be like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> we do it anyways. Um, what worked for me though, is 
coming from an analytical perspective and seeing what that person's actually doing, right? And I don't know if not, not everybody is going to be able to do that. It won't work for everybody. Uh, some people might not even know some of those things, right? I'm blessed with the fact that I'm surrounded by a lot of people, so I picked up things. I've read copious amounts of stuff. I'm also in spirituality, so I kind of can usually pretty well see what's actually happened, whether I want, want to see it or not, or I want to admit it or not. And so as an example, uh, 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 we're like with my son, <clears throat> my son will say or do something, you know, mean or whatever to his sister or even, you know, uh, to somebody else in the household. Instead of me reacting to that, I see a hurt little boy. Like I, I can literally see his hurt feelings spewing out of his mouth right now. You know what I mean? Like, and I'll even tell him, like, Hey buddy, like I get it. It hurt your feelings. It did hurt my feelings. It, it did. Like, I watched it happen. You know, but it, so instead of me reacting to what he's saying to me, I'm trying to react to what I know the truth to be. And that is, he just got his feelings hurt. He's emotional right now. Yeah. And so uh, the best example that, that worked for me years ago was with my wife, even, right? My wife has been through trauma in her life. She's had things like most people have. Um, but my, you know, my wife can be an alley cat at times. <laughs> you know, like my people see my wife and she's like this lovely thing. Oh my gosh. You know, okay. Well, there's other times that I've seen that she's not so nice. Like, and so, uh, there was, and I would get uh, offended by it and I'd want to respond. <clears throat> so sometimes it would escalate and didn't need to. So now it has been working for years now, uh, I know that if I say something to her, if it's a difficult moment or if it's a stressful moment or whatever it might be, if it's just one of those moments where it has the, uh, the opportunity to go sideways, um, I, I tell myself she's coming uh, from a survival perspective, mm -hmm. right? Meaning her first instinct to survive. So if she's got to lash out, she's going to lash out. If she's going to hurt, she's going to hurt. She's going to do whatever it is and that, that her instantaneous reaction to things is going to be that of survival. And so much like an alley cat, you know, if you're trying to give food to the alley cat, you have to understand that that mm -hmm. cat can very well try to bite you right. when, you're, when you're just giving it food, you know, and, and and if the cat does try to bite you, you're not going to like try to kill it because you should know ahead of time. It's an alley cat. What do you expect? You know, uh, the story of the snake and the frog, all right, you know, when the snake, you know, he, the frog gets on the snake's back to take him across the river and he, at the end he bites him. He's like, why'd you bite me? Because I'm a snake. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so like. Her responding from a place of survival has nothing to do with me. That's just how she's hard coded, right? hard wired right now. So, what helped me is to see it from her perspective and saying, "Hey, I'm not going to take it personal right now. What's about to come out of her mouth or the tone or whatever it is, I'm not going to allow that to infringe on my own uh, insecurities, right? I'm going to let her be who she is and just understand that it's coming from a place of survival." Right. Right. Much in the same way, like when I said, my son, if he'll do something, he'll say something. I don't light him up when I see him do something, uh, maybe mean to his sister right away because I know what happened. I saw her hurt his feelings and I saw him laugh. So instead, I try to get him in touch and say, look, buddy, that hurt your feelings, right? It, it didn't make you feel good about yourself when she did that. That's why you did this. I get it, but it's just not okay to act that out. Right. And so when it comes to receiving stuff from other people, what worked for me was seeing them for for the behaviors that I know they are. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, for you, it was just, hey, I love mm -hmm. them. I'm going to say something I love them, which is awesome. Right. Like, so I think whoever's listening to this, um, you know, he already addressed, you know, basically working on your, your stuff and choosing a better option when it comes to responding to people. Um, and what I'm saying now is when you're talking to people, they're giving it to you, mm -hmm. understand where they're coming from. You don't have to agree with them. And I'm not saying that. See, that's the other thing, too, is two things can be true. You know, my wife can absolutely be coming from a place of survival. It can also be terrible, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's never the right answer to be defensive or to lash out or, or react right. to somebody, right? It's never a right answer. But I'm not dismissing that when right. I acknowledge where she's coming from. I'm giving her grace. I'm giving her the opportunity to be human right now. And you know what? You're not always going to choose the right thing, and I get that. You know, it sucks. I'm not cool with it, but I'm strong enough mentally or, or emotionally to say, all right, like I see what that is. I don't want nothing to do with it. Right. You know, and, and so uh, by by accepting somebody, it does not necessarily mean you're signing off on the behavior, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. It's de-escalating the situation. It's giving them a moment to be unskillful. I think what we just what we just witnessed was 
the exact same thing being said two different ways, or at least yeah. well, one, yeah. you know, in, in other words, the reason you do that is because you love her. Because if a person comes into your home to steal it or to hurt you, um, I don't think you're going to go like, it's it's because you don't have a dad. <laughs> and I, I get it. You're lashing out. You're angry with the world. Wrong house, brother. I, this ain't what you want, man. <laughs> so, so in other words, because you don't love that person. That no. person, you know, but, but if you love that life, you're going to try to stop that without killing the life. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, because you don't know them and you, you really don't care what background they have at that moment. So so we're actually saying the exact same yeah. thing. No, I, yeah, um, absolutely. So, so I'm going to expand a little bit on that because when the, you, just the semantics part for me. Right, right, the... right, right. And, and, and when I when I mean by that, when I say love them is because my analysis ability is not is, is very questionable when my emotions are attached <laughs> sure. so so i may be good at analyzing a situation that i'm not emotionally attached to um but i can't trust my analysis when i am emotionally attached sure. because at that moment i can care less why <laughs> <laughs> i don't care what your background is i don't care who hurt you i don't care what your last guy did i don't care what you last. i don't care if you had a bad day at work i don't give a damn right now i'm just pissed that you're even throwing any of that defensiveness yep. onto me. So the reason we had that discussion back in the day was because I had, I, I, I did not know love. I only knew hate. Right. Um, in, in, and I really thought it was the answer to everything. The more I hate, then I don't have to be attached. I don't have to, to have guilt. I don't have to have fear. I don't have to wait for how you feel about me. Because I've already dictated all the relationships moving forward. And therefore, I felt that that protected my heart and that protected me from hurting. However, when I when I think love, love is hard to not be soft. So so I learned how to soften my tone, my look, my voice, my care. If I just say I love you in my head. And so it was a trick that I used uh, to be able to help clients that I really um, initially, at least initially, I didn't even care about people. And, and I was a counselor already. And I really didn't care about my clients. I'm like, all right, who gives a shit? You right. know, and that was hard because I was like, all right, bro, you better if you're going to do this job, you got to learn how to feel for it. Because I, I I wanted to, to love them. And then I realized things about them. And I'm like, OK, now I don't love you no more. <laughs> you know I mean? so, <laughs> so 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 I needed to to to, to kind of move that forward. And luckily, I got not only really good at it, but I, I but I believe it you know, to the point it's part of my wiring. Right? right. So now when I say I love you, it's because I'm allowing you that leniency because of what you've come through, but I'm not, but I can't get in the details. So, so like, let's take it with spouses where you took it. We're with, with close people within sure. your household. Um, you're going to be in a position in your household where your emotions are being triggered. And so, and while your emotions are being triggered and you're, your other partner is being defensive. They're no longer listening to your message. So here's what does not work. No matter what technique you use, whether you use a technique that sounds more like what I just explained or a technique what Trinity's saying, it doesn't matter what technique you eventually use. Here's what does not work. Getting louder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I still do it. I still do it. Do. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I can't help it. it. I can't help it. I'm a passionate I, I, person. I, I've learned and I've, I've done many times where I get softer but I'm not Clint Eastwood. So as much as I want to be Clint Eastwood and just give you a look and just talk real soft, I don't carry the whole package that Clint Eastwood has. So I have to turn into Joe Pesci because that's more <laughs> the package that I've been gifted. You know what I mean? I want to, I want, I want to be Clint Eastwood because I look more up. I look up to Clint Eastwood, but I turn into freaking Joe Pesci and, and, and I don't want to be, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not all the time. Sometimes I can stay Clint. Sure. Other times when it's not working, I'm Joe Pesci. All right. So I say that because what doesn't work is us getting louder. What doesn't work is us calling the person names. What us does what doesn't work is being smirky and laughing. See, you may be laughing on the inside about some of the things they're saying, but if you laugh like a jerk on the outside, you know you're wanting them to see it, and then you deny it. When you get, when you, when, when you, 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 I've seen some of you do it like, what? I just, I just said this, but you're giving them that sarcastic look. You're giving them that. You're letting them know 
sure. you're full of shit, but I'm not going to say it. So you have nothing on me. I you know, might have I, seen that a few times in my house. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the point is, is, is what can work for you though in that respect is to know. All right, I triggered something. What did I trigger? And I actually like that part of the technique the best for me in my household. Right. For me, is if I right away say something and I hear Psh, like coming <laughs> out of nowhere, I'm like, all right. What did I do? What's going on? Because and if I hear nothing, nothing. What are you saying? Like, all right, all right, all right. I'm just saying because I felt like some. If I'm if I'm reading too much into it, let me know. But I but I I felt a little something. And so before I proceed, I just need to kind of know what I'm stepping into. <laughs> and it, and it, and if I do it, if I do it in the same jovial sense that that my partner knows or my family knows, that's fun, Louis. That's happy, Louis. Then we're gravy. But if I do it in a sense that that's oh that's sarcastic, Louis. That's Louis on the defensive. It's not going to go well. Right. So that's the key factor. The the key factor is you know damn well what you're doing. Stop doing it. You know damn well what they're doing. You better shut up. <laughs> there is nothing when someone's being defensive with you. You can't do anything but love them through it, regardless. You can't do anything but accept they're where they're coming from regardless like trinity's saying you know their pains you know where they're coming from you know enough about the people and all that stuff you just may not care right now so love yourself enough to not put yourself in a situation to to get hurt and you will be hurt you keep going you keep going that snake gonna bite (laughs) and you you might think you're the strongest snake um, some of us always think that we're the strongest snake. And my wife likes to act like I'm the strongest snake. Like she'll be like, Oh, you get brutal. I'm thinking it's only cause I'm not letting you know that shit hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that, the reason I bit you hard that way is cause you already hurt me hard. I'm just not going to let you know it. So I'm going to hurt. So, uh, the, you know, uh, love yourself enough to give yourself another day of life. <laughs> cause, cause <laughs> there's a whole channel dedicated where, yeah. where, where some of you, you just went too far and, and you don't wake up the next day, you know, like for instance, right now, Trini, I know it, it's kind of funny. Um, so my, so in our house, I make the coffee every morning, every morning I go because I wake up early. That's all. Sure. But Dana prepares something in that coffee sometime. <sighs> right. So back in the day, I knew that she was using some sort of probiotic or something like that. And I'd be like, Dana, I don't know what that coffee is, but that, that's just not, that's not selling to my stomach. Right. And then she admitted, oh, I put something in it. All right. And it's like, damn it, Dana, don't put stuff in my car. So so I have to address. This is a conversation that we're going to have today, by the way. We're going to have oh it boy. today. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a it, it better go good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. For my sake. So 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 I've been noticing that the last whole jug of coffee and this new jug of after I came out, there's like this white powder, white powder residue in the coffee in like. And I don't want to say numbing because then it sounds like cocaine, but like a weird like stevia or something. I don't know what it is. No, she wouldn't do that. It's, but there's something. And it's like, what is she putting in the coffee? You know, <laughs> she is doing something very secretly. In this coffee. So here's an example of you. I can approach it with humor, which is my style. And she'll accept it 100 percent. Or I can approach it like, dang, you always do something. You're you know sneaky. You try to put shit in my my food you put shit in my drink you're always trying to give me a some sort of in her it's a vitamin it's something good for me whatever but she doesn't know that that shit affects me man you know what i mean <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> you know what i mean but she's loving me trinity sure. i know she's loving me she's just trying to get me to live longer she's just <clears throat> trying to make sure that i am a healthy person but she doesn't need sneaky little ways man. you just uh you just uh inadvertently uh, gave a, a fantastic tip by the way um okay. for anybody who's trying to have a conversation with uh anybody really but especially somebody you're emotionally bonded with like a spouse if you want to if, if you want to immediately send it into defensiveness use the words always or never yeah if you want to immediately put it in defensiveness, doesn't matter what your message is, doesn't matter what comes afterwards. But if you started it out by saying you always or you never, 
Mm-hmm. I promise you it's going to end in defensiveness. <laughs> yeah. Use the word today. Throw <laughs> throw the word today in there, and it it, it makes you talk different. Yeah. Uh, um. So it, it was funny. You just inadvertently gave it to him because you said something about it. You always do that. So that's an example of, like, if you're – if you're trying to be skillful and you don't want this situation to turn into a def- defensive situation, right. yeah. um, now mind you, you can't control their behavior and you don't know what yeah. kind of day they're having. You might accidentally right. trigger something, like you said. Uh, but there are certain like go tos. The right. always and the never are, are just a bad idea. Right. It really is because nobody always does anything or never does anything. Like right. it just might not be as frequent as you would like or uh, infrequent, but it, nobody always or never does. Um, so, anyways, well, let's just hope this isn't evidence. This stays Dharma time defensiveness <laughs> episode, you know, <laughs> yeah. and not evidence. I'd like to to submit this as evidence. See, <laughs> what he was talking about here was exactly how she ended up poisoning him, and that's why Mr. Okay. Delgado is no longer with us on this day. Exactly. So, so let's just hope. Let's just hope. <laughs> This, um, ends all, this ends okay, <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> we'll see. I'll, I'll keep. Uh, I'll keep my phone by me. Um, just all right. So you got to be uh, episode saved, right? Look. <laughs> yeah, you got any? Uh, you got any wrap up you want to do today? Um, talking about defensiveness. Let's. Uh, you know, uh, look. We all. we We. We all get defensive. That's just part of the deal. If If you're a person that says I'm just being honest, I'm just being real. You may just be a jerk. You may just be defensive at the moment. And we're all jerks sometimes. We're all mean sometimes. That's part of the deal. Whatever you think the world is, you are too. Whatever bothers you about the world, you are too. If you don't like hypocrisy out there, you are too. If you don't like mean people out there, you are too. Even Angel, even Dana, they're very mean people sometimes. They're very evil people sometimes. Now, you know, loved ones go like, oh, never, Angel. Never, Dana. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So let's let's just work harder on ourselves, a lot more on ourselves, a lot more on educating children than trying to change the world out there. The only way to change the world out there is you lead by example, because I don't care who you are. Eventually, you get on that pedestal high enough and somebody's going to call you on (laughs) your shit. Somebody's going to find something on you. And unfortunately, it un it unfortunately fortunately always uh tears apart uh for somebody the lesson that you could have gave out uh and you know and i got one more request since we're here on uh on a uh, black history month uh i i got i got this is a call to all uh black leadership um out there in the future because every city i go to every town i go to there is a martin luther king boulevard every city you need to ensure that this man this man did a lot of great things man there's a lot of great stuff and, and and i think we're losing the messages of what martin luther king did and what he said and all that stuff and we're giving way too much credence to to new black leadership that, that, that aren't as loving and peaceful but let's stop putting martin luther king boulevards in the worst of neighborhoods <laughs> Let's stop making it a place that, that becomes a joke for people to say, like, if you want to buy crack, just find a Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, <laughs> let's start putting I want to see like a, a, a gated community built and it has a Martin Luther King Boulevard or Martin Luther King Street. We, we are perpetuating stupidity, perpetuating stupidity when we continue to put certain names, certain roads in certain places. That I, I think that's where we need to go to. Stop. Let's not knock down a monument, but instead let's put a Martin Luther King Boulevard in the next uh, uh, golf community that we create. That's that's that that would be nice. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm, and I'm just saying and that just hit me because I was sitting, you know, at the airport after again going to another town and being like, why do we always do that? <laughs> yeah. And why are we OK with that? And And, and I don't. And it's not. White racist government put Martin Luther King. No, it's the black leadership saying this is should now be called Martin Luther King Boulevard because this is where we live. Yeah, but where you live is not where it needs to be Martin Luther King Boulevard. <laughs> where you live does not have to be that name. You know what has to be that name? Where they live. <laughs> That's That road needs to be Martin Luther King Boulevard, <laughs> not where you live. Am I wrong, Trinity? 
Uh, no, I mean, I, I, to me, that's a widely known thing, man. If you want to know the worst part of town, usually just right. find MLK Boulevard, and that's usually where it's at. Yeah, you know, because every like golf communities always tend to have like a Ben Hogan. Why? Because it's a golf community, so it's a bit, it's a it's a golfer name, right? Right. So so that's normal. That's normal. So, but we got to do is we got to flip it. We got to do some flipping to make some <laughs> to make something that says, "Yo, man, who's Ben Hogan?" <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we. we <laughs> We got to flip it. We got to we got to go into black neighborhoods and rename them streets to like white leadership names, right? Then we got to go into black uh, white neighborhoods and rename them to black leadership names. We got to <laughs> flip this to make you know who we are. To you know what I mean? And none of you know Latinos because y'all think I don't know we're the most disrespected culture on planet. Me and the me and the Asian guy keep sitting back there going like, "What about us?" You know what I mean? <laughs> so and, and, and the Middle Eastern, I'll put you with us, man. Don't worry, you're sitting with us too. Um, but the, the the point is, is that we gotta we gotta just be a little bit more mindful of some of these things moving forward, uh, because it, it, it just I think it's those little secret little subliminal things that 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 we don't really understand what we're really doing when we do them. I don't know. And hey, happy Black History Month, everybody, and happy Valentine's Day. Uh, to all you people that care about that. It's February while we're doing this. You might be listening to this and this is like 2024, or like March of 2024 <laughs> or, or like December 2024. But, and but we did. Yeah, and I'm already gone. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I'm here today. So those are my final words, man. Um, yeah, right on. I don't know how to follow that, but I'll do my best. I, I just it just hit me because it, it, it's so it's so stereotypical. I mean, it and everybody it knows it's true. By the way, so don't send me no damn hate mail. You know damn well that those na- you go down to Martin Luther King Boulevard, you're gonna find uh, some nastiness on that damn road, and you can't blame anybody for that nastiness other than you chose to name it that. Sure. Um. Well, first of all, thanks everybody for for tuning in. Appreciate you. Um. Right. Feel free to like, share, comment, all those yeah. fun things that. Uh, make the world go around for us um as always you can check us out live uh, on any of our shows on on facebook youtube and twitch under dope and dharma you can follow him at, at the dope doctor you can follow me at the dharma guy and then uh we are on uh at dope and dharma um yeah i mean as far as defensiveness i'll, I'll keep it short and sweet um do your fellows do your yourself a favor and, and listen more talk less um, um and when i say listen you know, try to listen to the message. Try to listen to what, what what's actually there. Um, you, you know, stop hearing that one word or that one phrase and then not listening after that, right? Because we all have it. They'll say that one thing or that one word, and it's like, oh, I'm done listening. Now, now I'm formulating how I'm about to tell you why you're wrong and everything else. Uh, and you missed the entire message. Um, so, so be aware of that. Really, really seriously, try to be aware internally the moment that you deem something positive, negative, or neutral. The moment that you've, you know, subconsciously decided, I like it, I don't like it, I don't really care. Try to really pay attention to that. Um, and, and then when you've paid attention to it enough and you're very well adept at, at recognizing that, start to pay attention to what comes afterwards. Start to realize, like, man, Okay, I've decided I don't like that. Now I'm starting to want to like go after this person, or whatever. Like, start working on those things, right? And, and and so, it's our job, as we always joke on the show, it's not other people's job to to tiptoe around your buttons. It's your job to make your buttons smaller. And the way you make your buttons smaller is by healing. And part of that healing is confronting the past, listening to others, taking in messages. Like it's all part of the process, guys. Um, and in doing so, you'll make the world better for yourself and everybody else. There's so much less stress. Uh, you know, when you're coming from a place of love and compassion for them and yourself, it really, truly does change the dynamic of, of your whole day. It really does. And, and your whole day can go south very quickly with just one moment of defensiveness, be it given or taking. So work on, on not giving it and work on not taking it. And and you'll see some serious changes. So, anyways, uh, that's all I got today. No, nope, uh, oh, no, nope, no. Nope. Before you do the sign offs, before you do the sign off, nope. uh, remember tomorrow's show. Uh, we'll be doing a We the Middle tomorrow. Okay. Are we? Uh, probably I didn't know around noonish. Yeah, yeah. I'm in town. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't leave again until the 21st for sure. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, we got a lot of things to talk about. We definitely got to talk about <laughs> China. Uh, you know, the weather, we didn't talk about the balloon. No. Um, so we got to talk about China uh, on on. There's on, a lot on, on tomorrow's show. Yeah, we got to talk about the State of the Union address. What you thought about it. Um, definitely got to talk about the Super Bowl. Got to talk about NASCAR coming back. 
Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, stick, uh, you know, follow us, and then you'll be able to know when we get on the air for that show. Right on. And, and for those of you who have not listened to us before, he was referring to We the Middle. We have three main programming shows that we do. We have the Couch Live on Monday nights. Uh, normally supposed to be Monday nights. Um, and we talk about drug and alcohol related issues and family issues, things of that nature. Uh, Tuesdays is normally when this show's on and we talk about things from a spiritual perspective. And then Fridays, we let our hair down just a little bit and we talk about politics and some sports and things of that nature, more of a variety. So, so uh, by all means, follow us and, and listen to whatever shows speak to you. And until then, now that you know better, do better. Peace. <laughs>